What's going on, everyone? Happy Tuesday. Hopefully, everyone is doing well, staying safe, healthy, and just having a great day so far. If you had to take a COVID test, hopefully you have tested negative. If you had to take a test for another virus, I hope you have tested negative for that as well. And if you did test positive, I hope you have a full and speedy recovery with no long COVID issues. It is time now for the Tuesday edition of the Virus Update for Tuesday, October 29th, 2024. If you're new to my channel, welcome to my channel. Maybe you clicked onto this video because you or someone you know are sick right now, or maybe there's an illness outbreak going on in your child's school. You've come to the right place. I inform you on all these different viruses and the, with the latest news on COVID, flu, measles, uh, other viruses as well. There's a lot of different things we talk about here, all to help keep you informed, safe, and healthy. Because let's face it, the government and the media, they're not talking about things much, and they're very misleading. You think everything's fine and dandy, but it's not. Only one case of COVID can lead to long COVID. We're seeing a lot of people from the winter wave who have had COVID and are now dealing with breathing issues, pneumonia, or something else that is taking them to the emergency department. I know there's been a lot of people who were just recently sick and here they have to go to the ER because something is just not right. They're having post COVID issues, which is a big deal already. So if you're new to my channel, subscribe down below, give this a thumbs up, hit that notification bell, and share this video with anyone you know. We have a very busy news day today. We have a lot of things I want to talk about. First, we're going to do the news, some daily data, some weekly data. Well, maybe, because Pennsylvania really has not updated, but we will take a look at some more uh, wastewater sites. And what I mean by Pennsylvania has not updated. Yeah, the weekly wastewater report for Pennsylvania is not in, but we'll look at Walgreens and we will get to some wastewater sites today hopefully if there's time. COVID-19 update for New Zealand. This is one day late. Usually we would talk about this on Mondays but here we are it finally came in on Tuesday. 889 new cases reported there. Seven further deaths and as you know every week they say either the ICU number is unavailable or there were none in the ICU. Well if people are dying there there has to be someone in the ICU or at least I would think but they did have 106 people in the hospital. All right, BNO reports California is reporting its 16th human case of H5N1 bird flu, all linked to dairy farms. That is not a good thing. Lassa fever isn't a problem now in Iowa. Yes, there has been a case of Lassa fever, an Ebola like virus which has been reported in Iowa, and it is from a person that did travel from West Africa, and unfortunately, that person did die, and this was reported by state health officials of Iowa on Monday. Moving on to this now, and yet again, another sports player is dealing with an illness. Janik Sinner, who is a tennis player, withdraws from Paris Masters, citing viral illness, Apparently he came early, but he started to feel sick, and he says he has a virus at the moment, which is going to pass in the next two to three days, so body-wise, he was not ready to uh, compete at this time, and he says he's very sorry, and, you know, all the usual stuff, but yet again, another sports-related illness. There's have been a lot of illnesses lately, and speaking of illness, well, there's another virus that is continuing to spread. One we have not talked about in several days. Maybe it's actually been a couple of weeks now. And this time in Minneapolis, Minnesota, measles is seeing an uptick. And you may recall, I think it was back in the spring or late spring going on early summer, we talked about this area quite a bit as they had 52 cases. Well, now they're up to 60 reported measles cases in the Minneapolis area. Yeah, that's not a good thing. Paxlovid, there is some news on Paxlovid today. Some good news. CIDRAP posted about a study that says Paxlovid tied to fewer COVID-19 hospitalizations and it reduced the risk of long COVID. Obviously, I am going to post this on my site in the studies section. We do have a study section for the treatments and that's where this will go. It led to a 61% reduction in COVID-19 hospitalizations and a 58% lower rate of long COVID. Now, I'm not saying you can't be hospitalized or deal with long COVID after Paxlovid, but according to this study, it has dropped 
the, the risk of it. It does reduce the risk, which is some good news. All right, moving on to this. I told you, there's a lot of news stories today, and we're not even done after this. Five students taken to hospital for possible illness at Baton Rouge Charter School. Yeah, and get this. They don't even know. Officials said a total of five students were transported to the hospital. They are not sure what is making the students sick. They don't even know. It's just a really uh, odd situation, and uh, school officials declined to comment. It just never ends with all these mysterious illnesses that are going on. Now let's take a look at the update from Mike Horger and his PMC COVID-19 forecast model for October 28th, 2024. And he says, comparable transmission to last week, as is the norm when bottoming out on a lull. So right now we are still in the lull, but it is starting to uh, bottom out. And if we go all the way down here, taking a look at his graphics, you can see here that in the upcoming weeks, things are going to start to rise again. And as early as Thanksgiving, his model is now showing we could get back to 1 million COVID infections a day. Yes, that is a, not a good thing. And it would match where we've been heading with previous years. So in other words, yes, we are going to see high levels of COVID once again coming. We're going to be entering the next wave. He shows Walgreens, which as we know, Walgreens shows that we're not dropping that much anymore. Things are bottoming out and leveling off. And when we take a look at wastewater, there is a small, tiny increase that represents that, hey, things may be increasing once again pretty soon. If you want to read his full entire update, I mean, if I sat here and read it to you in this video, it would really extend my video, but I've read it, and it's going to get quite interesting going forward. We'll have to see how things progress, and clearly, things are going to start rising. Halloween is this week, and then about a month from now, we'll have the other holidays, you know, Thanksgiving, and then come all the holidays that come in December. Yes, it's that time of year again. It's time for the cold season version of the winter wave of COVID. I know we're still in fall. Someone's going to post down below. It's still fall. It's time for the colder months version of the COVID wave. All right, moving on now to one other thing. Speaking of us starting to rise once again, I like to share things like this. I like to be fully transparent. Over the past uh, several days, we'll say about a week or so, I'm starting to see my analytics on YouTube saying, green again, meaning they give me those green arrows, which means views are starting to go back up. Watch time and all of my analytics are starting to go back up. When COVID peaked for the summer wave, I was constantly getting the gray down arrows. Why? Well, less people are searching about COVID or other viruses when, you know, the wave has peaked and things are dropping. But if you take really close look, you can see here we are starting to go up again. And when I look at my seven-day analytics it shows green arrows and it's starting to show some big um increases percentage wise which means we're on the cusp of the next wave of covid and all those other viruses the winter wave will probably be um, i'll probably be getting people for all kinds of sickness because you know covid testing is not perfect and sometimes it's not covid sometimes it is other viruses people get sick and when they're sick they like to do research on it all right moving on Taking a look now at what's going on with pollen levels, and I will refresh this, 54% of the country is in low status for pollen at this time. Taking a look at air qualities around the United States, and let's zoom this out and refresh this, and you will see there are a few troubling spots still for uh, bad air qualities, which that's going to continue to be a problem over the course of the next probably several weeks. Take a look at what's going on here. Mainly the east is doing the worst today. And you can see there are a lot of oranges listed here for many areas, which is poor air quality. And on the west coast, things have gotten better. But you can see here, there are still some problem spots as we head up closer to portions of Oregon and even southern Washington. But it's nowhere near as bad as it has been. All right, want to learn more about the climate and weather? You can do that on my X channel or X page, Climate Data Report, also over on Blue Sky. And of course, you can also check me out over on my other YouTube channel, which is also Climate Data Report. I did just post a video about the threat of severe weather for 
tomorrow, which has increased in portions of the midsection of the country in the plains. Storm Prediction Center has now got enhanced risk for severe weather. Philadelphia on Monday reported 786 EMS calls, and let's do a live look in at Montgomery County, Pennsylvania, and ooh, I'm seeing something I do not like. Abbeyden Township is reporting a cardiac arrest call right now. That's not a good call, and we do see another cardiac emergency, general weakness, respiratory emergency, and let's do a live look in at Chester County, Pennsylvania, and oh my, look at all of these calls. Yes, this is not good. We're seeing respiratory difficulty not once, but twice emotional disorder, multiple sick person calls right now, syncope, hypotension, overdoses multiple times. It's a busy time right now in Chester County, Pennsylvania, and for the heck of it, let's take a look at the Pennsylvania dashboard. Let's refresh it. Maybe it has updated. And no, it still has not updated. It's telling me here, last updated on October 25th, 2024. That's not today. And we can see here, as of the last update, Harrisburg was increasing. There were a lot of areas that were showing no change. There were a few areas still showing a decrease. But last time I looked at the charts, there were areas that were starting to rise. So with this being 15-day trend on the scale here on the legend on the right, I suspect in the next update, we will start to see more places showing a rise here in my state of Pennsylvania. Taking a look at what's going on with Walgreens, 15.9% positivity rate nationally. The prior week was 16.2%. That's a difference of down 0.3%. Total test, 4,675. The prior week was 4,551. One, testing's going up, positivity rate not dropping as much. It's signaling that we're starting to head towards the beginning of our next wave. New Jersey, the positivity rate is 15.2%. The prior week was 13%. That's a difference of up 2.2%. Total test, 171 versus 161. Testing up, positivity rate up. Indication cases may be starting to rise, at least according to Walgreens. South Carolina, 17.2% positivity rate. The prior week was 10.4%. It's a difference of up 6.8%. Total test, 128 versus 115. Texas is still improving at this point with 11.4% positivity rate. The prior week was 12.1%. A difference of only down just 0.7%. Total test, 797 versus 758. While that's still okay, a couple things to note here. The testing, it did go up. And look at the end of this chart. You can see here, it's starting to curve up a little bit. That with higher testing, and that's starting to get a little interesting. We'll have to keep an eye on that. You may be starting to rise soon. Kansas positivity rate for COVID is 18.4% this week. The prior week was 20%. That's a difference of down 1.6%. Total test, 38 versus 30. And we can see here, there's no clear trend just yet. Yeah, they had a little bit of a rise, but now it's starting to bounce around just a little bit. Over in Utah, the positivity rate for COVID is 14.7%. The prior week was 32.3%. It's a difference of down 17.6%. Testing, 34 tests versus 31. Taking a look at what's going on in Wisconsin, Wisconsin reports a COVID positivity rate of 22.3%. The prior week was 23.7%, down 1.4%. Total test, 112 versus 97. Taking a look now at Alabama, 8.8% positivity rate versus 8.2%. That's up by 0.6%. And your testing is up, 68 versus 61. Yeah, Walgreens would suggest that maybe you are about to see a rise. Mississippi. We don't talk enough about Mississippi because there's not a lot of data for Mississippi. At least we have Walgreens, so let's see what's going on there with that. Mississippi positivity trend, 3.8% positivity rate this week for COVID. The previous week was 14.7%. That is down by 10.9%. Total tests, 26 versus 34. Okay, let's take a look at a few wastewater sites now in the United States. Starting off with Las Vegas, I really have to show this to you. Take a look at this. They have now had multiple updates with wastewater just rapidly rising. I mean, I don't think I have found, and I have not looked at every single wastewater site, but I have yet to come across one that is rising this fast. This is not a good sign to see 
that uh, COVID in wastewater in Las Vegas is just literally going straight upward. And I know there was a NASCAR event there because we reported about one of the race car drivers being sick with an illness while driving. And we can see here respiratory RSV is not rising yet. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is low. HMPV is low. Here's that norovirus. Look at that. Wow. Noroviruses actually continue to go even higher. Wow, that is a really high level of norovirus. And we can also see here, hepatitis A has showed up a few times in wastewater. Since we looked at that, let's see if that's actually having an impact on the West Coast as a region. We can see here, yes, there actually is quite the bump here now, or a little bump, I should say, showing up in COVID for the West Coast region as a whole. I would think part of that is because Las Vegas is just going up so much. But then again, we do have quite a few wastewater sites in California, so maybe that's not the full reason. RSV is rising a little bit. Influenza A is low. Influenza B is still low. HMPV is low. And we can see here, norovirus in the West Coast continues to rise at this time. Let's stick with the West Coast for just a second. And let's come down here to Los Angeles and see what is going on there. You can see COVID levels are still relatively low. This is a huge wastewater site. 3.5 million population. RSV continues to be low. Influenza A is rising slightly. Influenza B still uh, looks like to me like it's low even though it's saying not calculated i'm not seeing it on the map hmpv low and norovirus again that looks to be low as well and it's saying not calculated let's go somewhere in the east now and see what's going on there how about we come down to atlanta i want to know what's going on how about we click on what is this roswell georgia john's creek and in roswell there is an ever so slight beginning of a rise once again for COVID. RSV has gone up slightly. Still low. Influenza A, Influenza B, HMPV all low. Norovirus is listed at medium. And we do see here some detections of Hepatitis A at this time. And we also note this EVD68 virus is listed as high and overall has gone up. So that's uh, concerning. All right. Moving on now to what's going on in New Jersey for today. And New Jersey, I believe they report 210 hospitalizations. It looks as if the page has uh, frozen on me. Let's see here. Ah, there it comes. Yes, New Jersey for today reports 210 hospitalizations. 69 out of 70 hospitals reporting. Eight people in a ventilator. Should we try for the ICU number? You know what? Let's skip that. Or can we get it? Jersey's website sometimes is very so. There we go. 22 people in the ICU today. Taking a look at New York State, 315 people tested positive in the last 24 hours. And I have to say it again. Take a look at this. Or I shouldn't say last 24 hours on the latest update. Take a look at this line here. You can see clearly New York State, the drop has slowed. It's not dropping much anymore and probably will start to rise once again soon taking a look at new york state hospitalizations 578 people in the hospital 65 in the icu that is higher than the previous number of 572 and 63. Alrighty, folks that does it for the tuesday edition of the virus update once again if you've clicked onto this video because you're sick I hope you have a full and speedy recovery, and if you've taken COVID tests, maybe you took one and it came up negative, it does not hurt to get tested a second time, because sometimes false negatives with COVID we know are a thing, and if it's a mystery virus, it would be really helpful to know if it's COVID especially in case you have any long-term issues. Because if you have long-term issues and you don't test positive for COVID, well, it remains a mystery. But if it does come up that you had COVID and you have long-term issues, you can start doing your research and you can start presenting your case to the doctor when you go to see your doctor. Because oftentimes, when people have long-term issues, unless there's a positive COVID test, the doctors are not going to correlated for COVID. Some will, most won't. If you enjoyed this video, give it a thumbs up. If you're new to my channel, subscribe down below, hit that notification bell, share this video with anyone you know, and of course, leave your comments down below. I will see you all again next time. Until I see you again next time, stay safe everyone, and have a fantastic Tuesday evening. Thanks for watching.